horrible live footage, Yellowstone giant geyser second eruption spewed deadly toxic ash until visitor run. NASA scientists concocted an idea a decade ago to save the world from the potential of a humanity-ending eruption of the supervolcano underneath Yellowstone National Park. Their plan sought to prevent an eruption of one of the world's largest supervolcanoes by siphoning off its heat and cooling it down with water. It was an ambitious and expensive proposition. It would also be logistically impossible and, according to volcanologists, would do utterly nothing to reduce Yellowstone's explosive potential. The 2015 theory never would have worked, and NASA never tried to make it work. So why are people still talking about? This was a back-of-the-envelope calculation done by some scientists looking at ways Earth might be threatened by catastrophe in the future, said Mike Poland, scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. The plan was more akin to a thought experiment than an earnest proposition to save the world from Yellowstone, Poland said. It was something considered by the agency's Planetary Defense Coordination Office. The Planetary Defense Group looked into things that might pose a threat to the planet, like asteroid impacts and so forth, he said. Large volcanic eruptions are one of those things that could potentially impact the planet, so it was one of the things they considered as a threat. So, they did a separate study on how this threat might be mitigated. Four scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the California Institute of Technology wrote the 26-page study, Defending Human Civilization from Supervolcanic Eruptions. The study summarized that while supervolcanic eruptions can devastate humanity, they can be avoided with large-scale engineering. Supervolcanic eruptions occur more frequently than large asteroid or comet impacts that would have a similarly catastrophic effect to human civilization, the study reads. We assess whether future supervolcanic eruptions could be dampened, delayed, or prevented by engineering solutions. The study was submitted to NASA in 2015, and that was that. Poland said it would never have been published if Brian Wilcox, the study's lead author, had not mentioned it during a BBC interview in 2017. It was never really released, he said. Then, Wilcox released it in response to some Yellowstone news. He just sent it to the BBC. So NASA ended up publishing it on their website, and it took on a life of its own. The study classifies Yellowstone as the greatest supervolcano threat to the US, and perhaps also to all of human civilization. Eruptions on the same scale as Yellowstone's last eruption could eject 10 quadrillion kilograms of ash and sulfate aerosols sufficient to blanket sizable fractions of continents and create a regional or global volcanic winter, causing agricultural failures and widespread famine. To prevent a future eruption, the scientists concluded that Yellowstone would need to be and could be cooled off. If implemented, NASA would drill more than 166-mile-deep holes into the rock above Yellowstone's magma chamber. Then, water would be injected into the holes at high pressures to gradually cool the volcano's ambient temperature to around 662 degrees. At that comparatively lower temperature, the likelihood of an eruption would be significantly reduced, and a humanity-ending crisis averted. The process would be slow and expensive. The study estimated a baseline cost of $3.46 billion, which would be somewhat offset by the massive amounts of geothermal power generated during the process. Even for a massive supervolcano such as Yellowstone, it would take less than 50,000 years for such a cooling system to completely drain the heat away from the magma chamber, all the while generating electricity at competitive prices, the study reads. While the study identifies several supervolcanoes that could threaten the United States, the world and humanity, it primarily focuses on Yellowstone. The scientists acknowledged that the task seemed daunting and perhaps impossible, but concluded it could be done.
Given the potentially huge cost of supervolcanic eruptions on regional or even global scales, we consider these to be potentially valuable to stimulate future research, the study reads. It seems quite plausible that the entire enterprise could be self-supporting following initial investment by sale of the resulting electricity into the national power grid. Since the 2015 study was just an internal document created for NASA's eyes only, it wasn't peer-reviewed by volcanologists. If it had been, the Planetary Defense Coordination Office would have learned their plan would be a colossal waste of time and resources.